The Brown vs. Board of Education case of 1954 is acknowledged as one of the greatest Supreme Court decisions of all time. It was also a case that had very little chance of success. Segregation was still heavily practiced in many of the places in the southern United States, even in the classroom. And the case was about just that. The judges talked for hours. As the lawyers waited, they knew they had made their case, and all that was left was to wait for the ruling. When the ruling came out, it came out as a perpetual surprise to everyone there. And it would have far-reaching implications for everyone in America. It would change the separate but equal philosophy and Southern culture forever. Segregation was a way of life in the South, and judges feared that desegregation would cause violent resistance from white Southerners. The Brown case almost caused a domino effect with the Civil Rights Movement, and many Jim Crow laws that limited the rights of blacks in America were struck down. Segregation was always deeply ingrained in the Southern tradition. It was very, very uncommon to see whites and blacks interacting normally as we do today. In the South, it began the integration of schools and other learning establishments. The Chief Justice worked hard behind the scenes to secure unanimity in the court decision. After much struggle, the Brown case ended with a sweeping victory. The Encyclopedia of American Studies said, Warren wrote the decision in a bland style avoiding inflammatory rhetoric and offering no generalized statements about the fate of other aspects of the Jim Crow institutions. For the integration of Central High School in Alabama, 17 African American children were selected from the surrounding towns. Only nine ended up going in though, and they were going to suffer tremendous abuse going into that school. In 1957, 17 African American children were selected from the Little Rock community to enter the all-white Central High School for the 1957 fall term. Of the 17, only 9 ended up entering. Hello, I'm Mr. Dow. I'm the principal of Central High School and I'm completely against this integration. Nine African American children they're going to be sending in. It's going to be such a disruption to our whole school, our whole community. And they're never going to be able to fit in. It's going to be such tragedy. The kids who entered were Thelma Mothershed, Elizabeth Eckford, Melba Beals, Jefferson Thomas, Ernest Green, Minijean Brown, Carlota Brown, Terrence Roberts, and Gloria Ray. These mixed racial classes, it's going to be such a distraction to all of our students. These African American children sitting in our classes, they're not going to be able to keep up, and it's going to slow down our education. When they first tried to enter the school, they couldn't due to a mob and the fact that the governor sent the National Guard of the state to block their entry. The first attempt was a fail. They were attacked by the mob and the National Guard did not protect them. They just stood by. Some of our teachers are refusing to stay at our school if we continue with this integration. They refuse to teach these kids. We've offered them bigger salaries. We've offered them more money. I even tried to bribe one of them but they absolutely refused to teach these students. We're actually having teachers leave our school. They did eventually make it in when President Eisenhower sent the 101st Airborne to protect them and force the government to comply. After the Little Rock Nine entered, schools across the South began to integrate. I'm Mike Down and I approve this message. 